Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. Here we are with uh, Mark Spencer and myself, Steve. Hey. Hey. And we're going to look at uh, some more motion stuff, particularly you're going to... Sh- Break stuff apart? Break stuff apart, shatter, yeah, yeah. I had, I've had a couple people ask about how to do a shatter effect. There's a guy named Eyal Stark, I-E-Y-A-L, E-Y-A-L, and Eyal, I'm sorry if I'm saying your name wrong, but you asked me quite a while ago about doing a shatter effect in motion. And um, there's no- so like broken glass, like an image just- Yeah, yeah breaking an image apart into pieces. Do and you bring it down or out, or does it? <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. So, you know, After Effects has this shatter effect that lets you, it's like a plug in, you throw it on, it does everything. And motion doesn't directly have anything like that, but you can shatter stuff. I want to show the basic idea okay. of, of how you can, one way you can accomplish that. There are other ways. Um, but this takes advantage of cloning and allows you some, to do some things. So, I have just an image here. This is just shot above uh, our home uh, in the Bay Area here. And I want to kind of break it apart, either to have it break apart or to assemble, e- either way. So the way I'm gonna do that is, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select it, I'm gonna hit the K key, which will make a clone of it, clone layer. K for clone. Yeah, under the object menu, make clone letter, Claire. K, K, K for clone, clone right? right? So, and that's, that's really my whole thing, is I'm gonna work with clones. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hold down Command and Spacebar and zoom out a little bit to make some room. I also need the time, I don't need the timeline, so I'm gonna F6 to close that. So I've really got some room, I'll select the clone layer. And what I'm gonna do now, it's cut a chunk of it out. So I'm gonna use a mask, and, and the mask tools are down this little button right down here. Pen tool, most likely. Yeah, I'm gonna use the Bezier mask tool, exactly, which is basically the pen tool, and I'm just gonna kind of um, uh, click and go in here and create like, um, Make like, a, like a shard. Yeah. I, I'm, I, I'm not gonna do uh, anything too fancy, okay. uh, but I'll make a little shard here. Okay. Um, and then I'm just gonna repeat that process. So select this, hit uh, K again, and select the Bezier tool. And by the way, there's a keyboard shortcut. You see if I option B selects it, so I could do it that way. I'm gonna make some pretty big shards here. So we don't have to do this all day, but I'm just probably do four you of them. You have to be in clone layer almost yeah. every time. Yeah, so each one I'm selecting and hitting a new clone layer. Except when uh, I'm renaming layer. Except when I'm in renaming layer. If I hit it in the wrong place, I'll rename it. I'm hitting C instead of K, because yeah. I keep thinking of C. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, and I'm overlapping these on purpose. You could align these up so they perfectly line up to each other. Uh, but you know, but I'm just, yeah, I'm just, I'm overlapping them. Right. And I'll do one more here. Now, as I get this last one done, I wanna make sure that they actually are, um, you know, overlapping each other, right? So, check this out, this is kind of cool. It's like, I could select one, each one individually, and I can't really tell, are they overlapping? I could turn off the source one underneath, Oh, I can tell now there's gaps, right? Yeah. But check this out. I can, if I hold the command key down, I can select every one of the masks. Oh, that's nice. And see them all. Isn't that kind of cool? Yes. So then with them selected, I can start taking these control points. Well, now that's great. And, that's uh, fantastic. And overlapping them to make sure that we've got uh, good overlap. And we'll make that shard bigger there and uh, make the shard bigger here. It's, it's really cool that you have access to all the points with yeah, all of the masks multiple selected. masks selected, and I can access them all. There, so now I see everything is covered. Um, just a quick question, can you, I'm just curious, yeah. I, I notice the mask shape is always red. Can you change the color, like in Photoshop or After Effects? So, if you got a red background, uh, or... I, I believe you can now do that in preferences, in appearance. Uh, I, I'm not, I, I'm I can't remember, curious. actually. All right. But that's, that's a great canvas, red. a guide color, dynamic guide. Yeah, I, th- I th- thought you could, so I might be missing it now. I just right. I don't remember that. You just can change curious. the grid and guide color, but I don't see the mask color there. Uh, it would be nice. Okay. It would be nice. So now that I've got these as separate parts, I'm turning off the original one, uh-huh. and each one of these now, you know, if I drag, you can see these are separate little shards here. I see that. Um, in fact, uh, let me undo that. Command Z to undo, and I just made it bigger. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to zoom back out again, Command Space, and zoom out, because now basically I just want to animate these to move away. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to set it, I'm going to move out to about, say, three seconds. I also set a play range out point there. I'll turn on recording, and now this is kind of fun. I just select each one of these, and in fact, I'm gonna move them in 3D space. So rather than use the default tool, I'm gonna hit the letter Q, which gives me the 3D transform tool, and what that allows me to do, I can move these guys out, but then I can also do things like rotate them in 3D Uh, space, you know, and also move them in Z space. I can move them all kind of ways. And I can't see it now, but Shift V, 
which is show full view area. I'll show you right there, show full view area. Lets me see things when they're off the canvas. So I'm gonna move that one down over there. And uh, because recording's turned on, everything I'm doing is being recorded as keyframes. I'll move that guy over and spin him around and maybe flip him like that. And yeah, I'm just kind of fooling around with how I want each of these guys to move off the screen. I'll move this guy way back in Z space like that. Flying back. I'm just dragging right on that blue arrow that's pointing right at us. I'll move it over, spin him around, uh, f maybe then fly him up or like that. Just, you know, really just doing these in a, each one in a unique way. And this is where you've kind of got to do the work. The other thing you can do if you want them to fly around themselves, the anchor point's still in the center for each one, but you can change the anchor point. I'm going to turn off recording for a minute so I do that without actually recording a keyframe. So the anchor point's in the center. I'll turn recording back on. So for this one now, Q, uh, if I rotate it, let me drag it down first so I can see the rotation handles. Now see it rotates around itself instead of that anchor point that was in the center right. of, the, of the screen there. So I'll just move that over there. And if I want to, I can also make these changes in the inspector. I can go to the inspector and there's all our position rotation values. So I can move this back in Z space using the inspector and then move it down. I'll hold the shift key to move it faster. Okay, so I can see they're all off the screen now. I'll hit shift V so I don't see stuff off the screen. And if I go back to the beginning, I'll, I'll turn off recording and play. Oh, nice. Got all those things just, just kind fly of out. fly out, right? And it's kind of a gentle fly out. Um, if I select each of these guys, I'm going to hold the command key down to select them each, and command A to go to the keyframe inspector, we can see that. Uh, they're all eased, right? Those keyframes yeah. are all eased. And I might actually not want that here. I might not want them to be eased. So what I can do there, if I click once in here and hit Command-A to select them all, I can change the keyframe interpolation so just to be linear. linear. Yeah, in this case, I just want them to kind of fly away. I, I, could, I could do exponential also to really have some shoot away, but just that works a little bit better for me to do that. Okay, so Command-A, I'm closing that. So that gives me, you know, a nice little animation, and I can always adjust. If I open up the timeline, um, I can adjust each of these guys. I'm going to close the actual um, keyframe editor. I'll do it up here from the window menu. So I don't want to see the keyframe editor, but I do want to see the video timeline because there's all of my keyframes. Keyframes represented by one keyframe. Exactly. So I can just, and for each layer, but I can, I can drag each of those back, and you can select multiple ones at a time and drag them back if you want it to be faster, right? So you can, you have can it offset them faster. too, so that each, each shard goes away at a different time. At different time. time, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, that's the basic idea behind the whole thing. Um, there's just one other really kind of cool thing. Like, what if you wanted to assemble instead? Um, one option is you could just drag this initial keyframe past, and that would flip the direction. Right. But I want to show you something else that's really cool. Um, what I'm going to do is, with this group selected, I'm going to clone the group, okay? okay? So this is the group of all of these guys. Got it. And I'm just going to hit um, K to clone that whole group. And then I'm going to turn the original one off. So now I've got a clone of everything. It's doing the same thing if we play through, right, exact same thing. Because it is a clone. But check this out. I'm going to go to the Behaviors pop-up menu and choose um, Retiming Reverse. Ah. OK? So I'm reversing this. And I'm going to make that reverse end at the end of this play range out. So now, instead of breaking apart, reverse assembles them, right? No, uh, you could have done that to the original group without cloning it um, and then just turning off the reverse, couldn't you have? Uh, I, I, don't, I don't believe so. Not, it's not going to... I've never tried that. I mean, I could just try dragging that onto the original group. But I'm, by, I'm clo by cloning it, I don't mess with the original group. I've got both, I've got both options. You have options. Yeah, yeah, I see, understand it won't, that. But right. it won't, you can't apply a, a, a retiming behavior to a group. Okay. It won't work. But if you try you to drag it, it won't go. But you can do it to a clone layer. Right, but you can do a clone layer. And that's, and that's important to know. Yeah, that's why clone layers have all these great features where if you can't get something applied to a group, you can, you can apply it to a clone of that group. That's very nice. And now we see it doing both because I have both turned on. Uh -huh. So uh, we actually see it seems to bounce and come back together again because I have them both turned on, which is another, another kind of fun option that you can see something break apart and come back together again. So just the idea of cloning and reversing the clone or retiming the clone uh, is really powerful because not just reversing, I could do all kind of retiming the speed of, uh, of this animation by cloning it. So that's kind of a, a little extra concept thrown in, but that's the basic idea behind kind of how to, you know, how to shatter something. Excellent. So if you uh, want to know how to uh, work with masks, 
keyframes, behaviors, everything Mark's been talking about. He's got an exit set of training at rippletraining.com. It's uh, the Mastering Mostern Complete Series, or you can buy individual yeah. uh, lessons. And uh, thank you, what's his name again? Oh, Ayal. Ayal for yeah. the excellent selection, yeah. suggestion. And Mark can show us the great shattered effect. Thanks for watching MacBreak Studio. Oh, wait a second. There's some, something else I want to show you. All right. Okay. So one more thing, guys, because this is important. So we used clones, right? We could have duplicated a layer right. and done it that way. But he, here's the whole reason that I used clones in the first place was that this original layer could be anything. So you can swap it out. Oh, I so see. And you don't have to do any work. So we have the shatter effect on this shot, right? Mm -hmm. It happens to be still, but it could be video. It doesn't matter. But if I drag any other clip over that, so I'll take another still and drag it over that original source clip, you get a hooked arrow release the mouse, and now we've got that shot with that same shatter effect, okay? Nice. So that's the power of using clones that you have the ability to just to swap that thing out. And in fact, that thing could be a, um, a drop zone, so you could publish this to Final Cut, and then anything would shatter that way. So you can build a unique shatter effect, and then put any it. content, publish it that's, to Final Cut, anything nice. you want to do. I was it. even thinking you can build that into a transition as well. Or a transition, absolutely, absolutely. Build a transition, and then publish that to Final Cut. So fantastic. Um, so so a, a little, a little extra. There you have it. <laughs> the power of clones. Yes.